It's now time to add the timber sill and the timber jam. Now these things line up together. If we just look down here, we've got so sort of these flush at the front and they are set back from the edge of the brick 15 mil. Now we haven't put in our sill brick yet. We'll put that in a bit later, um, but we'll bring these uh, profiles in. And if you haven't got uh, access to the premium content, then you can either draw something that looks uh, a bit similar to that. Um, the overall size of this is approximately, we're looking at 126 there. We've got uh, 44 mil there. And then this thing comes in approximately 70 mil. So you could sort of work out a sort of shape based on that. Um, and similarly, the jam would be the same depth as the sill and you would then have something that would be about 44 mil thick and then this offset here is about 72 mil okay so this bit is going to correspond with this bit here so when it wraps around there is a little bit of a difference in the frame because um, what we would have on the jam side are a load of extra seals that we're not going to put in. We're going to put in some of them in the window glazing section, but we're not going to put them all in. Otherwise we'd be here forever putting them in, but there are a lot more seals and thermal breaks that um, make this an efficient uh, window system. So over to chapter 403, and here's our window opening. So we've got to change these out for a different sill. We'll do that a bit later. And we come down to our components that we loaded up. And if you are coming at this for the first time, then it's the details button, open or create local collection. And if you do have access to the premium content, then it's in the uh, exercise files, chapter four, and it's called window components. And then that'll load up and you'll get access to these things. So we'll bring in the sill first. So timber sill, I'll just drop that in position and we'll bring in the timber jam and I'll do the same thing with that. Now. I've orientated the axis of these components. If you're wondering how you get them to come in right and work out where the sort of insert point is, just double click on one of these. Then the axis acts as the insert point. So wherever the axis is positioned, that's going to be your insert point and also the orientation. So this um, component orientation has to match the global orientation in the drawing. So the Z going up or the blue axis going up, the X axis or the red axis going um, side to side and front to back for the um, Y axis, the green axis. Okay, so that has to correspond with the global axis. Otherwise, it'll come in in a different shape. And if the axis was positioned sort of somewhere here or over here somewhere, then you're going to get the insert point at a different position as well. Um, another thing we have to do is trim the jam out to the sill and we'll be using the trim tool on the solid editing tools for that. Uh, this is only available for the pro version. There is the um, intersect with objects option as well so we can look at that but first of all I'll just extrude this down and extrude this across. So double click on the components manner which one we start with, push pull and then we'll take this one into that face and then double click on this one and once again, push pull that down and we'll take that to the top of there. Now to get a neat join, we're going to have to overlap this intersection. So what I'll do is just move these. So I'm selecting both of them with the move tool. I'll just move this back on the green axis a meter. So then I can move it back on the green axis a meter and it's going to be in the same position. And what I want to do, if I just trim this out, there's a little bit around here that's going to get messy. I'll just show you what I mean by that. So I'll use the trim tool first, Let's deselect these. Uh, use the trim tool first. This is the first one and this is the second one. We're trimming, um, this is our master object and this is the secondary one. So what happens here is that we get all these bits and pieces sort of left over as part of the, the trim. So to avoid that, so I'm just stepping this back by Control or Command Z. If I double click this and just pull this down so it overlaps it and double click this and push pull this out so that overlaps 
Then I do the trim command and select this one first and this one second. Then if I double click this now to edit and I triple click this bottom section, it just remains as its own object so I can delete this. Okay, so I've deleted that object. This is now a neat trim over that. So control Z to get that back. And then I just need to push pull this back into this plane. So double click P for push pull and push that back into there. And then with this and this selected, move it back on the green axis a meter. And then that's going to sit very nicely together. Now, if you don't have access to the solid tools because you're on the, um, the free version of the software, then there is another way to do this trimming. Unfortunately, you have to explode these to so take them back to their base geometry. So select them both, right click and explode. And then just make sure you've got, got it all selected. Right click on them then and go intersect faces and with model or selection it makes a difference because these are the bits that are selected. And then what you get is a series of trim lines around all this. And so then you can select the bottom section and delete that. And you can select the side section and delete that. Then there's a little bit more sort of work that you might need to do, but that's in effect uh, the best you can get uh, without using the trim tool. Okay, so that is another option for you, but then you'd have to sort of reconfigure this into um, a component, which you could call the window frame. So there's our window frame in position. Uh, the next bit is to add the casement, which is the bit that opens, and we'll do that in chapter 404.